As developers, we spend a lot of time looking at cool new shiny UI libraries or popular meta frameworks that shape the way we build web apps. Granted, the attention is deserved since we spend most of our days working with these tools. In this video, however, I want to discuss a slightly different topic and acknowledge some of the work done behind the scenes by a group of libraries used by almost all big UI frameworks you know and love. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. First on my list is Vite. This is a tool powering the dev environment for the likes of Svelkit, Solid Start or QuickCity. It was built by Ivan Yu, the same guy who came up with Vue, and, due to its simplicity and performance, is slowly replacing Webpack. Setting up the project is the first thing you'll do when starting a new app. To do this, we'll use the following CLI command. Then, we'll go through a quick wizard to choose a framework starter, opt in for TypeScript support, and we are ready to go. We will also discuss TypeScript in a second, but first I want to clarify the need for a tool like Vite in your project. Before ES modules became a standard, developers had no mechanism to work with JavaScript in a modularized fashion. As a result, the community came up with solutions such as Webpack or Rollup, which allowed you to work with modules in development mode. In a subsequent step, these tools went through all your code and bundled it together in a large distribution file served to the client. This was good enough for a while, but once the application started to grow in size and complexity, performance started to take a hit. Optimizing the bundle size and the way we serve needed code to the browser was always a point of interest and, during the years, various patterns such as CommonJS or a synchronous module definition and tools such as RequireJS emerged. However, things were fairly muddy until ES modules were standardized. Vite is leveraging the native ES module browser support and other advantages in the ecosystem. As a result, it manages to offer an easy-to-use environment and great performance results. Next on my list is a nice little tool called Prettier, an opinionated code formatter focused on simplicity. You can add it to your project by running the following command. Note the save exact flag here, which is pretty important. This ensures that the Prettier version in your project will stay the same until otherwise specified. Even a patch release of Prettier can result in different formatting, which can be problematic when working in teams. Speaking of teams, this is the main reason you should always have a code formatter in your project. When multiple devs are collaborating on a project, differences in code practices will arise regardless of the agreed-upon standards. Devs use different IDEs and are, in general, prone to miss some of the guidelines. With a tool such as Prettier, which has support in most development environments, you can seamlessly enforce a unified way of writing code. Once Prettier is installed in your project, let's create a config file and a file allowing us to exclude directories from the analysis process. Prettier Write will run the formatting process in our project. You can do this manually before pushing your changes to a repo or use a pre-commit hook to automate the process. However, the easiest approach from my point of view is to configure your IDE to call the process any time a file is saved. I always value simplicity and Prettier does the same. In their words, this tool is not a kitchen sink code formatter that attempts to print your code in any way you might wish. It is extremely opinionated and its goal is to stop all the ongoing debates over styles. However, there are a handful of options you can add to your configuration file, so things like commas or tab width can still be changed. Always use the configuration to apply changes and commit this file to the repo so that the entire team will work with the same rules. Ok, next, let's look at one of the stars of front-end development, TypeScript. In recent years, it gained a lot of market share and all modern libraries and frameworks offer TypeScript support at this point. JavaScript is good enough for smaller projects, but for larger teams and more complex code bases, TypeScript is a way better solution. You can add TypeScript to any existing JavaScript project by running the following command, or, if you are lucky enough, you'll have the chance to start building your app from the ground up, leveraging the advantages of a type system. At a first glance, I get how it might seem like TypeScript adds a lot of unnecessary boilerplate in your code base. After all, you can easily get from a plain JavaScript code such as this one to something looking like this. However, if you take all the benefits away from the equation and only think of the self-documenting benefits your code gains by using a type system, you'd still come up ahead. The reality of today's front-end development space is that apps are only growing in complexity and with the shift towards meta frameworks and server-side support, using JavaScript for your entire tech stack looks more appealing than ever. In this ever-growing ecosystem, the clarity TypeScript brings to the table is more than appreciated. Any TypeScript-based project will have a TS config file where you can configure the behavior of the compiler. 
Keep in mind that, at the end of the day, your TypeScript code will be compiled into JavaScript code, which is then either bundled in the distribution file or sent to the browser as ES modules. The last library I want to talk about is ESLint, a tool that statically analyzes your code to quickly find possible problems and potential bugs. It is built in into most text editors, and the chances are you enjoy the benefits of ESLint in your project without even knowing. You can edit in your project with the following command, and you'll end up with an ESLint config file where you can use a wide variety of predefined rules. A common question in the dev world is why would you need both ESLint and Prettier in your project? The answer is clearly stated in the Prettier documentation page. While there is some overlapping between the two libraries, Prettier does not handle code quality at all. In other words, use Prettier to make sure your code looks pretty, and use ESLint to do static analysis of your code and catch potential bugs in your code base. If you have made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching.